Hi, welcome to MVTV. My name is Trey, and today we're going to do a ESTJ interview. Recently, Blake, the ESTJ, which is on this call with me, joined MBTV, and we want to do a welcome call, welcoming him uh, to the group and giving himself a, a chance to introduce himself, just kind of get a feel for his personality and who he is. Um, so yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, some of you guys might have seen uh, the videos I did with Trey back on his older channel. Uh, we did a little Q&A session. Uh, I wasn't very into uh, MBTI back then, but I was into personal development and was uh, really trying to invest in new and unique ways of uh, you know personal growth. And uh, I had just kind of had some time freed up recently and saw MBTV, you know, they were trying to reach out to more people and do bigger things. And I was just like, you know what, I should, I should help them out because uh, that's where you get your, your best skills at is whenever you're doing the hands-on stuff for me anyways. Yeah, definitely. But, uh, yeah. So, thank you, Trey, for, for bringing me on. Yeah, for sure. So, um, what we what we want to do we want this call to be really really laid back uh not really very like we're not just gonna like i'm not gonna ask him like interview questions or anything like that uh what, 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 what structure no no structure yeah um but there was something some things that i wanted to bring up uh from the very beginning when it comes to uh who you are i was gonna go ahead and uh and actually i'll let you choose so, we've been friends for a while. We've, uh, you know, how, how long has it been? It's been like over a year. Yeah, it's been we like met, we met a back year in August, right? Or last August. Yeah, about a, about a year and a half. Wait, about wait. as long as I've known Damon, actually. So, right. um, so <laughs> it's actually funny because I think about it, and anytime I've entered, like I've put in a job application or anything, I always wanted to put you, you guys' names on there. And I only get known you guys for like a little bit, but you guys were still better better choices for the application than uh, anyone else, really. So I was like, uh, they, man, I was you like, guys know me better than most people. Man, I was waiting on a call from Amazon, but I guess they didn't care about your referrals. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, they, they like, didn't. Yeah, they Trey's didn't. got sick work yeah. ethic, comes up with the best ideas, put him in the think tank. <laughs> think tank, man. Think tank at Amazon. Get him in um, Bezos' office. <laughs> Bezos, I'd be like his uh, his little secretary pet. <laughs> but um, but me and uh, Blake and I both lived in uh, in Oklahoma for a while, in a specific region, Stillwater, Oklahoma, and um, we 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 used to do a lot of fun stuff. You know, I used to hang out with Blake a lot, and uh, I just I'm really gonna let him kind of lead this conversation because I don't want to bring up things or not or miss things that he'd like to bring up about um, just our relationship because what what it'll help do is paint a picture of um, of who Blake is because you guys know me well and so if you can kind of see the the flip side of the coin in this relationship uh, you can kind of get a better understanding of, of who Blake is so go ahead yeah de definitely um, you know I think when you when you start out as yeah, I like to have my friends be quite different than I am, even though I wish that they picked up some of the habits or had the same ambitions that I have. It's, it's kind of like a, um, it, it, it's, it's a weird thing going on. Cause, cause I know that if I have friends that uh, specialize in things that I'm weak at, that I'm going to be able to grow from it. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing what I'm doing? What the heck? And I mean, and when I, when I say like, uh, uh, like, like for Trey, for instance, I wanted him to join a, a or be active in like uh, the student organization or just go do more things with, uh, with Meridian, our tech school. And um, he, he had a, di a very different philosophy uh, about stuff. And I don't, I don't know what you were consumed at, with, at the time, consumed with at the time that made you not want to jump on board with that. What, what what the heck were you doing in 2015, late 2015? What were we doing? Well, actually, I was just beginning to understand MBTI a little bit better. So at the time, um, <laughs> at the time, 
I uh, you, you were inviting me to things. You wanted me to do student organizations, and I didn't see the point. I didn't understand why I would. Right. And um, and I think the reason that you you do it is is because it really does help in a lot of different scenarios. It does help in a you know you may enjoy the. Uh, I mean, there are good aspects in it, you know, like, for example, in a student organization, you can do things and, and uh, lead, lead events, and then you get skills, and you get better, like, for example, um, organizing events and, um, and having, like, a speech prepared for a bunch of people. And, you, yeah, know. Uh, you get to participate in an array of competitions and uh, really put yourself out there into being a better civic leader, okay? Of this, it it sounds it sounds cliche, but it, it's uh I mean it really does prep you to adult better, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely, and uh, and you know you, you have that as well as like it looks good for uh for like Do resumes and Do stuff. Oh God, he said it. Where like <laughs> where like for me, um, my resume would suck. <laughs> um. Yeah, my resume wouldn't have anything on it because I didn't care. <laughs> but, um, but hey, Trey, we, we kind of got the same philosophy. When I walk into an interview, I don't want to rely on that resume. I want to rely on the presence that I bring, the questions that I ask, and the you know the connection that I have with the person that is interviewing me. I want to be like, dude, just don't even look at that resume. I mean, because that's not going to be the best representation of the full package of Blake or the full package of Trey. Okay. Yeah, that's it. I've been skilling up and doing things in my free time while all these uh while most kids my age, you know, they're just, you know, not into that skill development. Now we we are we specialize in very different things. Uh, you more more the digital media guy and me uh What do I do again? Logistics, uh Logistics. IT servers. You I've dabbled did. in a lot of stuff and just try to figure out what I'm strong at. And I'm just like when I when I see that somebody else is really good uh, or is better than me at a task, I want them to be like the expert at it and do it. And I somehow help them become better. Is that is that a thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just want to I just want to jump into something because I just remember a, a good topic. So. Um, I want to I want to tell you guys about the first time that uh, I met Blake. All right, so we actually went to the same same class at a tech school. He was um, he was in Server Pro and I was in PC Pro, and I was actually in the wrong class. The uh, the school put me <laughs> in the wrong class, but <laughs> okay, you were in the wrong class. No, they did. They put me in the wrong the wrong the class. Wrong teacher but... with the wrong kids. And I was like, why did you guys put me in here? And they're like. They're like, oh, we can't change it for like another few weeks. You have to finish this class first. And I was like, why did you do this to me? So I show up in the class, and uh, and I remember I was listening to music and stuff. And and oh, dude, I think I uh, I noticed that Blake was a pretty cool guy because he's making jokes and stuff occasionally. And uh, and he was just he was just always taking um, charge of like the the room occasionally. So I was like, huh, that's interesting. So I was like. Uh, I was doing my work, not really, and I was uh, and I was listening to music, and then I was like, you know, that guy's always talking about music. I think I'm gonna like introduce him to this. So I was like, hey, hey Blake. Well, actually, I didn't call him Blake because I'm horrible with names, but I got his attention somehow. <laughs> and then he shows up, and this is the best part because Blake has changed so much. All right, Blake has changed so much in the past like year or two. Um, he shows up, he's got like, uh, what do you call those boots? Blake, you there? I think Blake froze. It's okay. He, uh, he was wearing like, oh dude, I don't even know what they're called, but he was wearing like some, some, some boots and they're like, oh, I wish I knew the name cause he, he would know the name if he wasn't completely frozen right now. But, um. <laughs> He's wearing these boots, and he came over, and uh, he was talking to, talking with music, uh, talking about music with me. And then he introduced me to some music. And then afterwards, when 
we had both shared our music, he was like, he looked at me, he goes, huh, he goes, it looks like you're not a degenerate. And I was like, what? <laughs> Blake, where are you at, man? This is weird. <laughs> Blake, you left us. I can't hear you. Was it my connection? Yeah, it had to have been. Dang. See, if this, if this laptop isn't plugged in, it'll be like, okay, I'll shut down your network adapter. You don't know what that is because you never finished PC Pro. Oh. Oh, wait, no, you did. You did. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I remember a ne network adapter. Um, <laughs> no, but, Blake, what I was talking about was how um, I, was, I was listening to music and you came over and you were wearing those boots. Do you remember what those boots are called? Were they the... Uh, like the tan combat boots, or were they the polo leather conquest combat boots? boots? Man, they were the combat boots. They were them combat yeah, boots. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. They were combat boots, yeah, and uh, and he was wearing jeans, combat boots, and uh, a shirt of a band he liked. And I forgot what it was called. It was a white shirt. But oh, it was, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers, man. Red yeah, hot. Red Hot Chili Peppers. So that was the thing. I shared my music with him, and then he was like, hey, have you ever heard of Red Hot Chili Peppers? And he, like, shows me his shirt, and I'm like, no, I have not, because, you know. What? I wasn't, I wasn't very well-versed with that stuff, but <laughs> what ended up happening was he shows me Red Hot Chili Peppers, and that was the beginning of our friendship. But what you missed, Blake, was that, because you, you disappeared, but – what you missed was that I told them that when you left the desk, you, you looked at me and you're like, you know what? Looks like you aren't a degenerate. <laughs> and then you walked away. <laughs> and that was the beginning, right? So, uh, <laughs> so it was because of my taste in music that we became friends, which was a very strange thing. But you know what? Um, I think it was really just more about the conversation. And, uh, and, I think it might have been the way I described the music, very intuitive stuff. And he had a best friend, uh, Xavier, that's an ENFP. Something that I can see with Blake is that he, he uh, tends to recognize when people around him have a certain ability or a certain um, talent or natural. They're, they're, very, they're very natural in a certain uh, field, I guess. So, for example, our friend Xavier... Uh, the ENFP was the most social person you've ever met. Uh, he would walk up and he talked to you and it didn't matter if he, like, he would somehow find interest in everything you said. So it was never, ever about him unless you drilled him and asked. He would always ask more about the other person and about what they were doing and how their day was. He'd get really interested, almost like it was his day. And... Um, you know, people that I would have a hard time talking to um, for any reason whatsoever wouldn't matter. He would be able to talk to anybody the same way. Um, so, so Xavier, in that way, um, Blake, Blake <laughs> teamed up with Xavier and saw him as someone that was unique and had special abilities and became friends with him really easily. Blake is a dominant TE user, so everything that... Everything that he would do would have to have some kind of um, point. He would he would do something to achieve something else, and he'd become friends with people that were different or unique. And I was definitely uh, different <laughs> in the sense that uh, you'd go. Yeah, and Trey, whenever you showed me MBTI, I was like, wait a minute. This is personal development related. A kid that's yeah. interested in something personal development related? Where have you been all my life? And I was like, oh, okay, friends, buds. Yeah, and we did become friends. I don't remember uh, much after that because, you know, I have a really bad memory. But um, somehow we started hanging out quite a bit. And, um, and Blake, you know, what was interesting about Blake was that most of the time with my friends, it was just – it was very low activity kind of uh, things. Like when I did things with people – it was very like, you know, we might play a video game or watch a movie or like, you know, talk about theory or something like that. You know, it was never anything um, 
never anything crazy unless it was like a big group of people that had organized something. Now with Blake, <laughs> we, we like ran around the city doing parkour. It was awesome. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. you know, I have a portfolio in my head of things that I've done with several dozen, like well, dozens of people. Okay. And you know, I can't, I can't recall exactly what we did. What, what, what were, what were some of the fun things that we did? Okay, could you, do you, do you remember your account Man, uh, that, that we want to share on this, on this uh, <laughs> video? <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I mean, we, we ran, ran around town one night um, doing parkour. A lot of times uh, the, the fun thing about Blake was that he knew all kinds of people. So I remember one time he was talking about uh, how different people like from Eastern countries that come to the United States, how like a lot of Americans have um, like a weird stigma towards them. And he said, so what that allows you to do is, is if you're really friendly and really cool, you know, they'll, they'll invite you, you know, to their events and stuff like that. And so Blake would, Blake would do some really weird traditions with these people um, <laughs> from different countries, like these Eastern traditions. And, uh, and he would tell me about them and he'd be like, man, like, I don't know those people, but we could become friends really quick because, you know, you know, a lot of people in the area, you know, have a weird feeling with them. So like, we could be friends with them and we could like, what, what are the things that <laughs> you said we could do with them? That <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're talking no, about like their I mean, Eastern food and stuff. Yeah, man, they make some food that will really fill you up. Um, volleyball, they, um, the guys that I hung around with, they smoked a lot, like cigarettes and hookah, and uh, even went as far as to uh, huff some, uh, like some some propane out of a balloon. I was <laughs> not down for that, man. I was not. But these guys, these are the type of guys that wouldn't smoke or that that wouldn't uh, <laughs> lay their hands on marijuana, or yeah, or like, but but they would from a balloon. It, it just it just blew my mind. Um, that's that's crazy. Yeah, no, but it was so funny because Blake would do these things out of nowhere, and like uh, <laughs> like we were staying at his uh, his grandma's house one time because we needed good internet for something, and um, and when we stayed there, Blake goes because uh, we were we were walking. We were walking to his grandma's room or something, and then he said that there was some um, some Eastern people that lived there. And he's like, "You wanna you wanna go, you know, hang out with them and, and be friends?" And I was like, "What are you talking? About? Do you know them?" He's like, "No, but we can." <laughs> it was like stuff like that. <laughs> we were like, "What on earth?" And he would see an oper he would see opportunity in things around him that I was like, I did I was never aware of. So he really exposed me to uh, some some strange things. And I think that um, with Blake, he likes to do that, especially with people who. Which is interesting because being an intro introverted sensing user, um, he has extrovert intuition, which wants to see all sides of an argument. And something that Blake would commonly do is if there was anyone that was very close-minded in a certain regard, he would always want to introduce them to things they've probably never heard of that would, that would, uh, like a lot, you know, like for example, atheists or, um, atheists might reject certain religions because they're the biggest ones or they know a lot about that religion, but there's some religions that they might not know of. And Blake would always do this thing where if there was ever anything that someone seemed closed minded to, he would try to open up something that they didn't know about, like a, maybe a religion that um, is very um, unpopular in the Western world. Yeah. And then, and then they'd be like, what? That's like, what is that? And, you know, they wouldn't have an argument against him because they'd never really heard of it and they didn't really have any information on it. So it would force them to, you know, <laughs> it forced them to go look at it and, uh, and maybe open their mind a little bit more to, uh, to different aspects of the world. So it was really cool seeing that with Blake. Uh, a lot of times he, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> He, he would just do do things that I was like, are you are you crazy? Like, what are you talking about? Like, just these random people. Like, you you want to what? You want to you want to eat their very strange food? He's like, yeah, you know, they don't they don't have tables there. Like, we'll just sit down on their floor. He's like, most likely, you know, they've got this or that. And I was like, how many of these houses have you been to? <laughs> Wait, did did we ever 
were, were you ever no, with we, me whenever we did? Nope. Oh, man. That sucks. I know. Um, it's okay but, in the future. Yeah, we'll have to do it sometime. It was, you know, it sounded fun. There were a lot of things that... Um, <laughs> it keeps happening Blake, to, me, Blake. to me, too, by the way. Um, like, I'll walk by some uh, people from the Eastern world. I'm just going to sp- specifically um, the Southwest Asian world. Like, I'll just say, hey to them, how's it going? To spark up a conversation, they'll be sitting on their porch, and they'll automatically invite me into their home. Because I took the time to actually, like, acknowledge them, their existence, and, you know, respect. And maybe even throw in uh, some lingo from their language. Assalamu alaikum, here and there. I just, I mean... I want, I want to learn from, from these people because it's like there's, there's so much uh, stigma from the people that I've grown up around. I'm just like, dude, there's got to be another side to this. Yeah, exactly. Another side. Basically um, verified what I've learned from the internet by going out here into the world. See, there, there's a part of me that is very introverted. And I'm like, okay, got to learn all this from the internet. And then I'm like, okay, let's go apply it. Let's go have some fun. And then I go out into the world, and I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Oh, hey, look. These all happen to work. These people have these sort of opinions, and these are why these people do this. And it, it all makes sense now. I don't know if I'm making sense, but... No, it, it makes sense. It does. You know, okay, thank you. the funniest thing about being friends with Blake is that you guys know I'm, uh, I'm an INFJ. And, uh, and Blake... The time I thought he was... Eating. <laughs> yeah, and Blake Blake prefers um, e, uh, ESTJ. And what was funny was that at the time uh, we thought that I preferred ENTJ. So what would happen was, you know, he would he kind of got the wrong view of an ENTJ because <laughs> he was like, you know, I would space out a lot, and uh, and I didn't even realize that I was spacing out really. So Blake would. Blake's SI is so grounded, and so is that TE that, you know, he'd, he'd be like, Trey, you should probably uh, do this. And he'd put me in front of a computer, and he'd be like, you should probably do this. And he'd walk away, and he'd, like, start making a shake or something. And then it was funny because I would have zoned out, and he would have already finished the shake. And he'd look at me, and he'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm sitting there and I'm I'm like spaced out, and and you'd be like, "Hello, like <laughs> like I finished my shake," and you're still sitting there like not even doing anything. <laughs> and so there were things that that you wanted to accomplish that, you know, over time I frustrated you. <laughs> and it's funny because um, because apparently um, INFJs and ESTJs aren't supposed to get along at all. So it's crazy that uh, we only had it. We had a few difficulties. I, I mean, I'll admit that, you know, I frustrated the crap out of you because <laughs> I, uh, I have blocked TE, you know, polar TE. So I, I wasn't uh, mobilizing much. You know, I think within the first, I think within the first couple weeks, uh, I was just thinking about this, sorry. Uh, within the first uh, couple months of us actually hanging out, I think we like wrestled each other. Is that right? Remember that? I don't remember. I think I remember so. there, was, there was this other guy we were with, and we were just we were just wrestling each other back and forth, just getting out that primal physical aggression. Really, really <laughs> I don't remember. You don't remember? Yeah. I don't no, expect I don't. you to remember, Trey. <laughs> no, but you know what? We did all kinds of things because there were things that I was close minded to that Blake would be like, Blake would uh, just kind of force me into, and uh, and I was very resistant, but you know. Overall, I enjoy the experiences. Um, when you're more close-minded than an ESTJ, you know you have to try something. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, you know, I had things that I had completely blocked off in my mind, and uh, you know, I tried, I tried it, and uh, you know, with with lots of things, we, you know, they don't know actually. No, I can't. So you, know. you know, I can't necessarily <laughs> share a lot. <laughs> um, but there were a lot of people that Blake introduced me to that are huge people in my lives. For example, I have an INTP uh, friend named uh, Daniel that we met at a at a party. And the funny thing is that when Blake and I went to parties, we never really went to participate in the party. 
We always Don't went. you mean networking event? Yeah, that's what he would always What's call it. Networking like, event? <laughs> Blake always has to have a title, like a business oriented title, so that like when he does it, it's it's got a purpose. Where everybody and, else was participating in mindless debauchery and I was staying level headed. Yeah, and exactly. Why we I was there and not in somewhere else doing something productive. We would go there. I think and that was in the, all these people. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. We would go there and get all these people, but uh, I think in the last half of my senior year, I think yeah, after March, I really really started to look at um, the value of my time when I'm spending it around like people, and just like, wow, we're not doing anything constructive. We're not talking about ideas. We're not growing each other. Um, you know, I really need to redefine uh, what it means to relax. Because people, they go to these party things to, you know, relax. They go to, you know, get stimulated by, by something, by something phallic, a cigarette, a joint, a beer, a hookah, a bong, but it's all phallic. To find a, yeah, isn't that interesting? And, you know, maybe meet some people or pip, pick up a girl or something. But I just, that was so, um, so like right here, so surface level. And oh, yeah. I just, uh, I, I know, well, once you start doing personal development and start looking at what's possible in your life and start unlocking new skills and abilities, uh, you really want to reach your full potential. And you can't do that while you're just, while you're hanging out with people that aren't even worried about uh, what their potential is or don't even know what their potential is. They don't even know what they're going to do. Trey, he knew what he was going to do, even though that he was, um, you know, gazing off in a distance. He was still, uh, he is still um, more self-aware than people that are living in the moment. Well, I mean, at least I'm more self-aware than those people. <laughs> but hey, um, I don't like how oh, I shouldn't compare. No, 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 I, no I, I'm just, I'm just making a joke. I, I understand. Um, but the thing is with a, uh, we got to have some points here, not just mindless rambling and reminiscing. No, no, no. This is good. This is good. Uh, people, people will enjoy this. I want. <laughs> what was it? Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. We went to parties, man, and it was so funny because all the people there were so messed up. They were so messed up. I remember, like, they were extremely. They were. They were either extremely high, extremely drunk really messed up yeah like really messed up people <laughs> and, and we would go there and we we'd be trying to have regular conversations with them and amuse ourselves <laughs> like we would somehow okay we went to a hookah lounge just so that we could meet people oh then, god yeah and then we, we went there and then they 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 really liked talking to us because we got like you know blake saw some people he knew and um th they were apparently like uh, really influential people in like the area uh and then like you know when i say influential i just mean that they have like a, a pretty deep rooted history in the in the in the area they were renowned yeah renowned in a way and then uh, we we just started getting invited to their parties and we were like well you know why not so we go there and we start talking to people and it's so funny because you never expect this everybody's messed up everybody everybody's drinking smoking you know, everything you can imagine and they're all just messed up and none of them make sense. And they're like, it's funny cause the house we went to was so big and there were so many people in there, but there was nothing in the cabinets, no food, no nothing, just alcohol and some leftover pizza. And like, <laughs> you know, it was just, that place was ridiculous, but, and I really messed some cats. Yeah. But the thing is I met like, we were, we're all just, you know, Oh man. Yeah, like there's people flipping out. They're, they're all tripping out and stuff. And then at the end of the night, we find this dude. His name is Daniel. He's an INTP. And I start like sharing theory with him and like MBTI specifically. And um, I started going into like the dynamics of functions and stuff. And, and, I, and, I was, and he was just absorbing it. Like he was like super intuitive, just like asking me really detailed questions that you wouldn't think people would, you know, ask at that stage. And you're like, I just started talking about this. This guy's picking this up really well. Really awesome dude. Overall, like we, we ended up being friends for a long time. I lived with him at one point. Um, Blake, uh, Daniel, and I would all hang out. Um, you know, it was it was a 
is a really good relationship and it was earned through just like you know networking with you know these these <laughs> these really you learned quite a bit from Daniel too didn't you what you learned quite a bit from Daniel too didn't you about yeah, like I did. Uh, you know Daniel is very uh, not Daniel the ENFJ if anybody's confused he's an INTP but uh, he he knew a lot about history very well versed um, he uh, he enjoyed having me around because we thought a little bit different but at the same time very similar and uh, just you know stuff like that and it was just crazy because you know Blake would expose uh, expose me to people who um, situations that were like really weird that I'd never been in before and I just I had to figure it all out like how do I handle this situation and then at the same time like I meet people that were like um, were huge people in my lives there's another one her name's Lori she's an INTJ and uh, that was a friend of Blake's for a while and like you know even her and then her boyfriend uh, he's an ENFP and just you know these people Daniel her um, her boyfriend it was like very uh, important people to me and so you know all these all these uh, connections were made uh, primarily because Blake put me in, uh, in very strange situations um, <laughs> and the thing is he would do it he would do it because he wanted us to he wanted me to branch out the thing that I've noticed about Blake is that he was always willing to help in a way you know uh, Blake Blake I would walk into Blake's house so actually Blake you know what just just share a little bit more I, I gotta find this in my phone because I have it written down somewhere. Um, well, you know, I'm I'm thinking back to it, and I just I really got a lot of personal satisfaction from helping people that were stuck in a rut. Okay, I'm gonna give an example. That one guy that was in our IT class, <clears throat> IT class. Okay, the one that wore the same clothes every single day, and um, <laughs> uh. This was extremely introverted. I tried oh. my best to, to get him into situations that would help him break out of his shell. Um, and you could tell he cared. There were, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, he would occasionally, like that one time that we were, uh, we were in, in the car, and he yeah. like, came up and he was like, oh, hey, guys. He didn't really say anything. He got in the car, and he, <laughs> we drove him somewhere, but he didn't really – talk to us or anything he just he was very very closed off but he you could tell that he at least appreciated Blake enough to get in the car for no reason and we're like what, what do you want to do and he just wouldn't respond you know he's very very introverted um, but we eventually just took him home because <laughs> because you know he said he wanted to go home it took him a long time to, to tell us that but um, you know, Blake, Blake really did try to be friends with him in a very um, open-minded uh, in a very open-minded way because he was kind of the in a way, you know, a lot of people pushed him away in our class and so, you know, Blake uh, Blake spent a lot of time trying to be his friend and stuff, trying to learn about him and, you know, open up his uh, perspective here's the funny part Blake Blake one time walked in his house and he says, how much protein have you had today? That was literally the first question he asked me <laughs> when I walked in his house. <laughs> I walk in. I was like, what's up? And he, and he stops. He looks at me, and, he's, and we're, like, really far away from each other. And he goes, how much protein have you had today? And I was like, uh, <laughs> I said, all I've had is a bowl of cereal. Uh, and it's actually 7 p.m. At this, at this time. So he goes, uh, <laughs> he goes, how on earth are you still alive? <laughs> and he's like, I made you, I made you, you know, burritos or something. Like he, he made me these like, like huge amounts of food. He would always do this huge amounts of food. I remember one time I was really poor, really poor. And, uh, Blake, uh, Blake like had solution. me donate plasma. Yeah. Yeah. He had me donate plasma. He's like 50 bucks and we'll go buy a bunch of food. He's like, and you'll be good for the next, you know, week and a half. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we did it, you know, just things like that where, you know, he knew about things that I would have never known. I didn't even know that you could get money for donating. That doesn't make any sense to me. Donating and retrieving money, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But there were just things like that I was completely oblivious to that, uh, that Blake knew about in a way that he could help people, um, he could help himself, and he could utilize a lot of different things that, you know, Blake, Blake for example, when he joined MBTV, there were a bunch of services that we use um, that are free 
that he knew of, and he knows how to fully operate. And he didn't even have to look it up. He didn't even have to like do a lot of research. He may have, I don't know, but I don't think he did because it was so fast. He just integrated it that quick. You know, he knew a lot about the systems that already existed because he knew that he'd have to eventually, you know, do this work. Um, he didn't ever know what it'd be for. Blake, oh, guys, you guys are going to love Blake for this. Blake literally was the guy who came up with the idea for Slack, for the MBTV Slack group. Yeah, one day. And by the way, if you're not a part of that, uh, just go ahead and click the link in the description. Get on that. Yeah, no, because Slack is a really great place. Slack, Slack is like, um, <laughs> when it started, Blake was literally like, oh, yeah, you know, what you need to do is get a community. He was like, for MBTV, he was like, you need to somehow knit together a community. And he goes, hmm. And then he runs over to a business magazine. And <laughs> entrepreneur magazine. Yeah, he, he entrepreneur grabbed the entrepreneur magazine. magazine. He goes, "Look, it's on the back," and he showed me Slack. It was a, a new thing, and I was like, "Huh, that's interesting." And I was like, "It's supposed to be a replacement for email," and he was like, "Yeah, but you can use it for for a community." He's like, "Like a big chat room," and when I saw what he's talking about, I was like, "That is a great idea." <laughs> so we did it, and the thing is, he he took something that may have had a certain use and he tweaked it just a bit and created a full-blown community for MBTV and that community was awesome. The original... Um, it is awesome. It is. And, and the thing is like when it comes to that Slack group, it's very... Um, it's very social. There's not a lot of like boundaries or it's not all about um, theory. Everyone's... It's a, it's a lot of NE, honestly. Like a lot of people... You know, we do talk about theory and stuff on there. We we uh, we socialize quite a bit on there. You know, Slack is quite the place. Um, and you know, I really enjoy all the relationships that I've made on Slack. But here's here's the thing about uh, Slack: the people that want to take their time to actually discuss these things about MBTI have their hands in other areas of life that are helping them grow as a person. Okay, I had a conversation with the guy I remember one time, and he knew so much about fitness and nutrition. And he actually gave me a solution to uh, overcome one of my uh, fitness plateaus. Okay, and uh, we had talked about you know ways that we could break out of um, like a, if we're in a rut, whether our posture is jacked up, or um, you know we're just not getting to our goals that we want to in fitness. So I mean, th there's there's that, and then there's like so, so many other. Uh, topics that you could talk about besides just MBTI. It's not like people are, you know, living in their mom's basement, sleeping on their mom's couch with $47 in their bank account, uh, just looking up MBTI stuff all day and talking about it on Slack. No, there is, there is variety. And that's, I mean, that's what I love. I love variety. Um, it strengthens my NE. Like, I have a question I want to ask you. Yeah, what's up? It's a very intuitive question. Uh, hold on. <laughs> okay. Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, man. All right. So, um, you know, you are very... You are very... Uh, I don't know how to word it. You Don't get me. very frustrated if you're not contributing or creating or uh, if you have something to devote yourself to if you don't have any of that and and you aren't able to somehow put something out then you're very frustrated and uh, you you know you don't spend a lot of time there I've noticed you get pretty upset with yourself if you can't if you can't find something that you can engage in and contribute to and work hard for so um, there's also with people around you you encourage others because a lot of people are very placid and don't necessarily do a lot of moving and a lot of um, uh, a lot of creating so what I want to ask you was why do you what, what do you think is a core reason that you as an individual feel a, a need or a pull or the the need or pull to push you know what I mean what, what is it that makes you want to um, move so much and create so much? Like, what is it that, why is that important to you, like, at a, at a core level? 
at a core level? You know, because you can give me answers like I'll, a lot, I'll, a lot I'll, of other I'll, people. I'll give, you, I'll give you an answer that I haven't gave before, okay? All right. This is, this is good sauce. All right. Um, in my preteens, I was, as you know, or in you know my early teens, I was kind of obsessed with, not really obsessed, I, I dabbled in and eventually got obsessed with the military, okay? Not just the going the war, obsessed with the war and you know all the machinery and all that, but but the men who actually would be out, be out of their mind to just put their lives on the line for a value system. The value system that is like, um, it's freedom, liberty, the, all of our rights that we have as individuals. Um, the the groundwork that allows uh, a nation to prosper, okay? That allows us to have this free internet exchange right now that allows us to just have all the things that we have. There, there are people that would go as far to put their lives on the line to defend this. And I was just like, wow, they're just so set in their value system. And, you know, they're so revered by society. They're accepted. Well, and the people that don't accept them, they're, um, I mean, I don't think too highly of them. <laughs> but um, it's just, I saw it as a, as a means to obtain respect whenever you uh, support a value system like the ones that uh, basically the, the utopian American society value system. Yeah. I just, it turns me on. It turns my spirit on, okay? Okay, but calm down. <laughs> no, but that's awesome. Um, is it, is it the, because uh, it sounds like what you're, what you're really getting at is like a, a true devotion to, like, I mean, because it takes a lot. Like, I mean, we, we say those words a lot, but we have to remember the significance like, you know, we say the words a lot about about laying your life on the line. But if you really think about it, this is you, and you have to put your life, like, you have to put your life on the line. You might lose your life. Like, just think about how important that is. You know what I mean? And the fact that you're devoting that to something that is not necessarily you, but that's something that you care about. and Something you are, bigger than yourself. Like, yeah. It's because I think it's because I've grown up exposed to the nature of selfish men and how it brings about demise and I'm going to say this again degeneracy in their life whenever they choose the selfish path. And the people who are selfless, but not to the point of total like uh, sacrificing their entire selfless to the point of. Um, let, me, let me restart. I revere the men who are selfless that want to put in the work to build themselves up to support others. And, uh, you know, knowing that everything that they could have worked for could just get cut off just like that. Yeah. Building their body, their mind, and putting themselves out there at risk. Yeah, that's intense. It's like it's almost like you saw the, you saw how. Um, it's, it's, you got it's, the it's example. A spirit. You got the example okay. of how how men shouldn't be, and so you wanted to find how they should. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and of course, you don't you don't have to join the military and put your life on the line to be, you know, a real um, man. Okay. I'm just speaking in, you know, I, I get a lot of my influence from men. That's just, I mean, but you have to you have some kind of craft and it may be, you know, it may be just your, your daily, your daily, like maybe just a regular job, you know, but it's still your grind. And there's, there's gotta be a core motivation and reason behind what you're doing because why, right, why else would a man, why else would a man live on this planet? Really? 
It's like, I respect the man that greets me every single morning with a smile and with like uh, happiness in, a vo in his voice that makes my omelets at the UCO cafeteria, at my college cafeteria, okay? Always positive, upbeat attitude, loves what he does and helps people out. He is really connected with the people and un understands their needs and meets it. And he's, he's selfless in that. Yeah. At one time, I was a I was a cashier, and uh, <laughs> I would always take people's. It was actually uh, food orders, right? And I take people's food orders. And I remember one time I had a job, and when I was working that job, I didn't uh, I didn't really necessarily care about the whole customer experience. I, mean, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it, and it was very draining over time. There were things about the job that made it fun, like the people that I worked with and like you know stuff like that but it was never really really what I wanted it to be and so I got another job one time that I, I worked directly with the people taking order after order after order after order after order and it was just constant the same questions the same answers you know just giving them their receipt you know just this stuff was like mind-numbing and at one one day I remember being like man you know I want to I want to make this person's like day more interesting. So I would try to be the craziest cashier like that you've ever seen. Like I just <laughs> like okay, for one, none of the cashiers actually asked how your day was. Like none of them. So any time that I did, I was already different. But then I'd go even further and I would like make fun of the customer. <laughs> like for example, I would ask them Yeah, no, it's so great, man. They they come up and I'd be like uh, they they'd ask for a certain order a certain certain meal and I'd look at them and I'd be like uh, <laughs> what I say uh, I'd be like oh we're not serving food today and they're like wait what and I was like yeah we're not we're not serving food and they're like yeah and they're like and they they point to like a burger or something like and they'd be like what about that and be like, that's just a model we just use that you know for for this or that and they were like they like believed me like people are like whoa like like I just stopped them dead in their tracks like they they were so blown away and it's like I had in my mind I was going to the Sonic I was gonna get these burgers I was gonna have a great time it was gonna be euphoria in my mouth and then and then, and then <laughs> And I'm telling them we don't serve food today. And they're like, you're just like, and then I'm like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like, and they, they, they'd just be like, what? Or sometimes I, you know, they would have already tried to order something and I would have denied them and be like, no, we don't serve food here. And then I'd be like, um, what size Coke would you like? Like, like right after telling them that, right after telling them we don't serve food and they, they believed it. I'm like, yeah, but uh, what what size Coke was that again? And they they just be like, what? They're like, <laughs> and what would happen was they 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 laugh completely. And sometimes it'd be so funny because you'd have a girlfriend and a boyfriend show up, and one of them wasn't paying attention. So I could do it once to one person, <laughs> and when the other person looked up from their phone, I'd be like, uh, they'd be like, oh, and I want, and I'd be like, we're not serving food. <laughs> so I could I could I could get them twice. And so I know what you mean. In a way, like I had a job, a mission. I wasn't just getting their food. I was like, I was trying to get them the out of their everyday lives. Because I'd say, you know, are you doing anything exciting today? And they'd be like, no. And I'd be like, oh, come on. I was like, you know, you, there's so many things you can do. I was like, don't, yeah, don't let your baby. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, come on. Come on, man. So don't, don't, don't let this day be, you know, average again. You know, don't don't let it be average again. It's gonna be the same every day. I was like, do something, do something different. I was like, and I'd I'd sit, make suggestions, or you know, some people would tell me there were events going on. I'd be like, go to this. You know, it's free, and it just stuff like that. So I know what you're talking about. My job there was not just to serve food every day; it was to give and contribute and contribute some kind of meaning to something. Dude, but yeah, anyway, like, that's my core. That's my core value value system i just want to contribute to society the bigger picture as a whole but most of the estjs out there that have that in mind they get clouded that they don't have to consider people's emotions that they don't have to 
they can just bypass that. But no, you can't. You can't. Yeah. It's part of the ego development. But, yeah. All right. Well, you know what? Um, this is a good call. I think people got a general feel uh, of who you are. I mean, we'll probably do a part two. It depends. Right. Um, but, yeah, because we'll, we'll have to talk about it in just a second. But uh, for the most part, if, if this is just one part, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you have any more questions, you can email Blake at blake at mbtvcoach.com. Um, and, you know, start a conversation with him. Ask him, you know, maybe if you're an ESTJ, you know, you might have questions for him or somebody who, you know, if you are into socionics and you have certain relationships uh, that, that uh, ESTJs have with your type, you might be interested and curious as to, you know, how that, how you can get past boundaries that you may have with ESTJs in your life and just stuff like that. Because, you know, ESTJs, ESTJs are everyone's boss, right? So I'm sure you have ESTJs you have difficulties with, and that TE can be brutal sometimes. So, uh, so it would be nice uh, for Blake to offer some kind of understanding for the most part. So uh, thank you once again, everyone, for watching this video, and you should definitely go check out the Slack like we were talking about earlier. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Yeah, thanks, guys. Talk to you later.